Oh, hello. Good morning, all you beautiful low carb ladies. I'm so happy to see all of you. All right, hello to Instagram and IGTV from Sugar Breakthrough Diet Plan, and good morning to those of you on Facebook in our amazing community where lots of talk is happening in the Sugar Breakthrough community group. Okay, so today I'm talking about the first step to getting back to plan so that you can avoid any sort of further self-sabotage. I mean, I think we all know what it's like to go off plan. Maybe you had a bad evening, there was temptation, maybe it's just been a rough pandemic, maybe, you know, you, you know, encountered a trigger food and maybe you even planned for it, but just ate way more than you thought you were going to eat. So whatever it is, we're all human. We're all going to go off plan sometimes. I don't get lost in all of that. I don't beat myself up about it. The bottom line is that we have to build our skills so that we are equipped to get back to plan as soon as possible in order to avoid any more self-sabotage. All right, so... Let's dive in. This is day one of our back to plan week. And this is the first step to help you get back. And guys, I just want to say before I even talk about this step, don't skip it. It is the most important step that you will take in this process of weight loss, weight management, better health, etc. And I just want to also say that, you know, just getting a little bit back to the fact that, you know, we are going to go off plan sometimes. We are human and we live in a society that's loaded with temptation. I was thinking about the analogy if you quit smoking and yet you live in a house with all smokers, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And you may have a few setbacks, right? We take a few steps forward. Sometimes we take a step back. It's all good. And in this case, when you give up, you know, you let go of 90% of those processed junky foods, we're still living in a society where it's just so prevalent. So I make mistakes. You make mistakes. Let's not get caught up in any of that. Let's dive in right now to the first step to get back to plan without any further self-sabotage. Hey, if you're on, please say hello and tell me where you're watching from. I'd love to know that. So whether you're watching live or on replay, please say hello and just state where you're coming from, where you're from. Okay, so let's talk about that first step. So the first step to get back to plan is reflection. What do I mean by reflection? It's all about getting your mind in the right place so that this experience of off-plan eating doesn't turn into a disaster, but instead turns into a moment that you can use for future learning, okay? So... Let's talk a little bit more detail. The first part of reflection is, is leading with forgiveness and focusing on our self-talk. So I don't know about you, but I still have to fight beating myself up when I've had a bad moment. And I think it's just part of being human. Maybe it's part of being female. Maybe it's just part of... You know, some of us just have that personality where we tend to kind of be a little harder on ourselves. But whatever it is, don't waste time beating yourself up. Because I'm here to tell you, after 13 years of experience helping women lose weight, I am here to tell you definitively that if you spend time beating yourself up and having a lot of negative self-talk, you are way more likely to fall down even further. And we don't want to 
turn a simple slip up into an avalanche, right? So we're going to lead with forgiveness. Now, if you're watching right now on live or on replay, doesn't matter. I want you to just close your eyes for a minute and I want you to listen to my voice and I want you to tell me how this sounds. So go ahead, close your eyes. And I want you to just hear my voice for a few seconds. And I want you to tell me how this sounds for you. I can't do this. I'm just not meant to be thin. I give up. Eh, I ate two cookies. I might as well eat the whole sleeve. Why is she thin and I'm not thin? Why does this work for everyone else but me? Okay, open your eyes and tell me whether you're live or on replay, go ahead and comment about how did those, that those first comments feel to you? And I want you to write the number one and then write how the comments felt to you. I'll give you a second to do that. And then I'm going to ask you to close your eyes again. And now I want you to listen to my voice again. And then I'm going to ask you again how this feels to you. Okay? Go ahead, guys. Close your eyes. Now tell me how it feels when you hear this. Okay, it wasn't a great day, but it's okay. I, I know that I, I've lost 20 pounds already. I know I can do this. Ah, bad day. You know what? I'm human. It's okay. I'm just going to move forward. What can I learn from this? Where did things unravel for me and how can I avoid this going in the future? I know I can do this. I feel hopeful. I feel, I feel, I feel like I have the knowledge to move forward. I have everything I need for success. All right, open your eyes back up now and just write the number two and tell me how those words made you feel. Okay. The first, the number one set is all about being in, in what I would call the judger mindset. And the judger mindset is, a my, this is actually material from, um, oh my gosh, I forgot her name. But the book that she writes is called something like Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. And, um, oh, it's Marilee Adams. And she's the author, and I was fortunate enough to take a class with her. She taught a class for my continuing education um, for life coaching. And her class just changed my life. And the first um, set of of phrases that I gave you was an example of what she calls the judger mindset. It's when we get into that mindset and we're so hard on ourselves, and there's so much negative self-talk and so many, so much negativity and, and, you know, self-sabotaging type talk that honestly, this judging type mindset it leads us to like the mud pit, right? We don't go anywhere with that kind of mindset. It's not a, a learning mindset. It's not a, a mindset that is solution focused. It's a mindset that is only focusing on problems, okay? Now, the second set of what I spoke with you, those phrases that hopefully made you feel pretty good is what she called the learning mindset. And the learning mindset is solution focused. It's non-judgmental. It's it's learning centric. It's, you know, I want to do better next time. It's focusing on the positive. It's 
it's being curious, it's being open-minded, it's being coachable. And when we when we're coachable and open-minded and curious for ourselves, that is the kind of mindset that leads to success, that leads to learning, that leads to behavior change, that ultimately leads to transformation, right? And that's what we're going for, transformation. If you are going for transformation, go ahead, whether you're watching live or on replay, and go ahead and put your favorite emoji right there in the comments, because that is what we're going for, ladies. We are going for transformation because we deserve it, we can do it, and there is nothing better than that feeling of empowerment, which when you know better, you can produce that feeling right there for yourself, okay? So the first step in reflection is to lead with forgiveness and to make sure that your self-talk is in line with learning with momentum, with self-reflection, with, you know, open-mindedness and transformation. The second part of reflection is make sure that you recognize your accomplishments so far. I don't care if you just started yesterday and today you had a bad day. It's okay. You can recognize yourself for doing better, for, for, for doing your best on that day. It's okay. Don't be shocked if you've tried low carb living several times and had to restart. It's perfectly normal, just as it's perfectly normal to do that with any diet plan, with any sort of behavior change that you're making. You should always, throughout your entire process of getting healthy, shedding weight, you should always be recognizing and celebrating your accomplishments. And the best time to do that, and one of the best times to do that, is especially after a slip up. It's okay, pat yourself on the back. You're showing up, you're there to learn. And if you, even if you haven't reached any milestones or gained the momentum that you wanted to gain, Pat yourself on the back because you showed up today, right? You showed up with that learning frame of mind. You're not self-sabotaging. You're reflecting. You're learning. You are priming yourself for the transformation that's about to happen. All right. The third and final step in this first step of reflection is... Ask yourself the powerful questions that inspire growth, awareness, and inspiration. So what are some examples? This is all part of that learner mindset. What powerful questions that can we ask ourselves? And if you have not picked up the book, I'm going to post it, you guys. I'm going to I'm going to post Marilee's book because it is powerful and it's the perfect way to also reference what I'm talking about. So here are some examples that you can ask yourself after you've had a slip up, however big or small. As you're in this first stage of reflection, ask yourself some powerful questions. And here's my suggestion. Write down a whole list of powerful questions that you could ask yourself and then pick maybe two or three that you can pull up, you know, easily and use as a source of reflection. So here are some powerful questions to consider. What happened? What was going through my mind at that time? Or, and or what was happening around me? How can I learn from this? What's the one thing that would have helped me overcome this or avoid this situation? So as you can see, there are questions that can open your mind. In, in the world of life coaching or psychology, we call these questions open-ended questions. They're questions that leave room for thinking, for learning, for growth. They're not limited. They're not questions that are limited to like a one answer, one word answer, like yes or no, 
red or white, right? So let's, let's start with an example. Um, last night, I, uh, we, my niece got married, yay, and it was over Zoom. And so my kids came over and I was perfect the entire day. And we were at dinner watching the Zoom video and I re we ordered in and whatever, long story, I requested some broccolini instead of potatoes with my salmon. It came with potatoes, no broccolini. And um, so I started eating the potatoes. And it's not that potatoes are a bad thing, but unfortunately what then happened was they had ordered pizza. Then what happened was I ended up eating some of their pizza. It's like I wasn't, I was sort of, torn between the, the piece of salmon was really good, but I wanted a carbohydrate and it was supposed to be a vegetable. And so the, the potatoes sort of led to the pizza, whatever. So for this first part of the reflection, instead of waking up mad at myself, I shrugged it off and I said, well, how could I learn from that? What could I have done, if anything, to make that situation a little bit better so that I didn't wind up going off plan. Potatoes really are not a big deal, but for me, pizza is a terrible trigger. Plus, it's not so good for my digestion because I really should be gluten-free. Anyway, so when I really reflect back on it, what I say to myself is, hey, first of all, no big deal, one slip up, right? I'm really conscientious about avoiding negative self-talk and beating myself up. Instead, I say to myself, it's okay, I've done really well. And I had a slip up and I'm just gonna think for a second, when that happens again in the future, because it will, someone's gonna get my order wrong, not gonna have what I need in front of me to satisfy me, how will I handle that? What I could have done is I could have done a couple of things. I could have some of the potato and just measure it out, call it an add-on carb for the day. That's part of the sugar breakthrough, one of the sugar breakthrough diet plans. There are actually two plans within the sugar breakthrough program. So I could have just, I was on the pro plan. I could have easily just had an essentials, we call it an essentials meal and just done the add-on carb, no big deal. If I would have just allowed myself, given myself permission and planned a little bit by taking maybe a deep breath before I started eating, that would have been helpful because I would have just thought, right, the power of the pause, let me just think about how to handle this instead of just diving right in and not putting any thought into it. Or I could have very easily gone into my own fridge. I've got broccoli. I could have just steamed the broccoli. It would have taken five minutes put on a little butter and I'd be good to go. So just that few moments of reflection helps me come up with a better strategy so that I'm building my skills to manage these kind of situations, right? Because as I said earlier, slip ups are gonna happen. We're all human. Sometimes we even do the best we can and there's really just no solution and you just brush it off, right? What could I have done better? Nothing. That, that's a valid answer too in some cases. Very few, but some. So the bottom line is this first step of reflection is very important so that a slip up doesn't turn into a whole day, a whole week, a whole month, a whole year of a poor diet. It, you get yourself back on track as quickly as possible. And the first step to doing that is reflection. So, go ahead and think about the most recent situation in which you've had a slip up and how can you reflect on it by recognizing the positives and also forgiving yourself head on and asking yourself powerful questions in order to move forward and learn from the experience. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Let me know what your thoughts are and go ahead, feel free to share this video with friends. 
We want to reach as many people as we can and get people on the path toward transformation without complicated numbers. Like if you have friends that have heard about low carb living, but you're a little intimidated maybe by all the numbers and macros and all that complicated stuff, the sugar breakthrough way of life might be for you. All right, I will talk to you soon. Have a terrific day. I'll see you next time.